Me cae eso. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Please sit. Please sit. So now we have just a minute, Mr. Shubham Shubham yes. Kumar yes. Sharma ji, right? Yes. And which is your district? Damo, ma'am. Damo, yeah. Madhya Pradesh. Yes, wow, very good. And uh, you've studied in uh, Madhya Pradesh or outside MP? No, ma'am. I did my graduation in Gujarat. In Gujarat. Yes. Wow. And then. And I completed my graduation in 2019, and uh, since I am preparing for a civil services. Three years, is it? Yeah, ma'am. This is my second attempt. Second year, okay. Yes, no problem. What went wrong last time? Did you think anything went wrong? Yeah, ma'am. I missed men's qualification cutoff by just two marks. Oh, only two marks? Yes. Oh, that's very bad. I only two. Yeah. Doesn't matter. The world has not ended, is it? Yes. So now you have a very good variety of subjects. English, Hindi, Mathematics, Physics, Chemistry in yes, your class 12. Yes. And then you've done Dairy Engineering. Yes. Right? And uh, some other subjects also, Technology and all that. This so, is Dantiwada Agricultural University, Gujarat. Yes. There is one Dantiwada in MP also? In Chhattisgarh, ma'am. Chhattisgarh. Yeah, it is famous for, or we can say it is infamous for Naxalite related activities. Yeah, it still is. Yes, ma'am. That area is still is. Yes, ma'am. Doesn't matter. The world is not made of equal people. They yes, all types, no? Yes, ma'am. So tell me, uh, is there a big dairy, uh, you know, area in uh, uh, Gurgaon, Haryana area? Yes, ma'am. Gurgaon. Do you have you ever heard of a dairy? Uh, you can call it a factory. You can call it anything. You haven't heard. I think nearby Verka is there. Verka. In Punjab, ma'am. I am not aware about. What the is the name? Where kind? In Punjab. But okay. actually, I am not aware about you the dairy not. which is situated no, in Punjab. Okay. Now, tell me with dairy engineering that you have done. Yes, ma'am. Now, I am told, I have just heard, I don't know, that uh, these uh, cows and buffaloes and others, yes, they give more milk if they listen to music. Have you heard about this? Yes, ma'am. There was research. Ah. Means, uh, and there was research that when the cows and buffaloes, when they sing the song, huh? one hormone is secreted named the serotonin okay. and uh, they give pleasing effect for them. And when the cows and buffaloes, they feel, I mean they feel pleasant, mm -hmm. they give more milk. This so is the research. Correct, is it? This is the research ma'am, I am not quite sure that uh, this is true. I mean research is going on ma'am. It's still on. Yes ma'am. Still on. So, do you think we treat our animals very well? Like, do we look after them in their bara or whatever it's called, in the area where we keep them as farmers, as a government? Do we look after them properly? Yes, ma'am. During my graduation, ah. means I have to go to Gaushala. Gaushala, right. And yes, ma'am, one time in a week. Mm -hmm. And where they treated cow and buffalo and many types of goats species and sheep species are there, yeah. they treated them very well. Because ultimately, they in return giving some economic benefits. That's mm -hmm. why our moral duty to take care of them. Ma so, uh, like a cow, for example, and even the waste of a cow, like gobar, like urine, whatever, that also is used in agriculture. Yes, ma'am. Isn't it? So, we had a jail in Madhya Pradesh where they used to use all the products that okay. a cow and a buffalo or whatever produced and then returned them into the soil and got better products. Yes, ma'am. Including neem, you know. Yes, ma'am. They added neem to the urine and then, you know, converted it and put it in the soil. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think when, means in my opinion, when we use the cow dung, yeah. means in agriculture in the form of manure, mm. it improves the soil fertility mm. as well as it reduces the harmful effect which is being done by the harmful artificial pesticides and fertilizers, ma'am. Mm. So you recommend it? Yeah, I'm. But there are some drawbacks. First of all, first of all, ma'am, there are many initiatives are taken by the government to utilize the cow dung. But the problem is that the quantity of cow dung we required is uh, not achievable. We Means, don't have adequate. Yeah, we don't have adequate cow dung in our country, mm. and. Uh, to restore the fertility after the cow dung adding in the soil, it is a quite time taking process. Okay. 
that's why marginal and small farmers they are not able to Man. afford the time as well as the investment ma'am so uh, tell me of volcanic soils have you heard of volcanic soils yes, in which area of the country means basically deccan trap is famous for volcanic soil where black soil is present uh. and in madhya pradesh region khargon and khandwa region is famous for black soil where cotton cultivation is taking place ma'am even in maharashtra yes ma'am maharashtra also <coughs> attached area yes, almost so yes, basically the southern region of vindhya hmm. is famous for black soil ma'am so why is it so rich i mean what is the quality of that soil it is yes, i am not aware about the exact nutritional quality but it is rich in phosphorus ma'am phosphorus right yeah in volcanic soils are very good for like groundnut production and all sorts of production yes, cotton as you said yes, in the west that is in gujarat and maharashtra, maharashtra region yes. yeah that's why they have a bumper crop yes ma'am basically this could be the reason hmm. that in gujarat and maharashtra groundnut and cotton production is more very high they export yes, also yes ma'am yeah right sir oh sorry i am sorry we are starting this site thank you ma'am yeah okay but apna sir i see your optional subject is anthropology yes sir okay can you discuss the problems involved in rehabilitation or resettlement of tribals due to development projects in india yes sir there are multiple problems in the form of environmental cultural political basically the tribals are animist in nature they are prefer to practice their nature based religion and when they rehabilitate from the natural place to the artificial setting they got hinduized or means they means they got cultured so means their original culture is changed and according to famous anthropologist lp vidyarthi this phenomena is known as cultural mutation this is the first problem sir and second is economic terms they are suffering from the problem of industrial nomadism earlier they are living in the nature and they collect their livelihood from nature itself but when they resettled or displaced from their natural place they have to seek other means of livelihood and uh, and third is that political means naturally they are preferring their who oh, means their custom based political leadership and when they displaced from their natural means natural place they are influenced by modern means of political setup so i would like to know first of all why you would like like to join civil services and secondly how your study of anthropology can be used in administration yes, i want to join civil services there are multiple reasons first civil services gives me a diverse opportunity in the field of health education and in my opinion sir civil service has vast social utility in our society and i means in anthropology can utilize me can helpful me in civil administration because there are multiple research strategies which is solely based in anthropology for example amic perspective is there in amic perspective we see others culture in their own perspective and it is quite helpful in tribal development and the amic perspective is also utilized by varier elvin in the in the frame in the framework of tribal panchseel with the help of jawaharlal nehru during 1950s sir okay moving on india has uh, set a target to achieve 5 trillion dollar economy yes, sir. so uh, in your opinion uh, when shall india achieve this target and which are the sectors which are pivotal to achieve this target as soon as possible yes sir earlier central government aimed to achieve 5 trillion dollar economy by 2025 but just because of pandemic economic downturn was there in our country so in my opinion we will not achieve the target by 2025 but i am hopeful that we will achieve the target by 2027 onwards sir. and there are some and first of all in order to achieve the target india so tap its comparative advantage comparative advantage india has in the field of labor intensive and manufacturing sector we should tap the potential and second is that our skill rate is only 13% as compared to various developed nation where 90% they achieve so more skilling should be done we should tap the potential of 
means you know, digital economy, artificial intelligence, robotics, in order to ensure automi automization in the production, where we can produce cost effective produ products in order to ensure that our export competitiveness will be more so. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Shubham, you are from Madhya Pradesh. Yes, sir. Now, Indore has been an outstanding example of civic administration for the last so many years. Yes, sir. It has been ranking number one city in terms of uh, cleanliness. And also, it has got a very uh, well networked transport city transport system. Yes, sir. So, you will attribute this consistent uh, perform good performance to uh, I mean, the administration or political leadership or the people. I think sir, Indore has ranked consistently in Sachita Sarveksha since last five years. Just because of Indore's peoples are still means they are aware about their duties. Means even though the role of administration is there, but administration are acting just as a means just to provide nudge. They nudge the people and people are aware about their duties. And they itself, because I spent some time in Indore where I observed that they are reluctant to throw the throw the dust means okay. in the open sir so yes sir so, so now now you have a very you know visible example yes sir so is there any other district which is for in, in your own state madhya pradesh like for example your damo yes sir so are, are there any ripple effect on other districts that people are following oh yes we have neighbor, in our neighborhood we have such an outstanding example we should also follow that Yes, emulate sir. that uh, good practices. Yes, there, sir. there is any attempt by other districts as well? Yes, sir. There means there is a kind of uh, competitive federalism mm -hmm. in the district itself. Mm -hmm. And when Indore has ranked first uh, for the first time, then Bhopal and Ujjain, mm -hmm. they means they trying they try to imitate the practices. And I think Bhopal in last years so got second rank in Swachhita survey. Oh, good, so, good. sir, ripple effect has been has it means has has been there in Madhya Pradesh. Mm -hmm. And Madhya Pradesh is doing well in the means in order to improve in order to improve the status of sanitation. Okay, good, yeah. very nice. Now your option is anthropology. Yes. Sir. Okay. So can you tell me two three things which uh, general population of India should learn from tribal population? Yes, sir. There are many examples. First, tribals are egalitarian in nature. Means uh, there is no gender gap or gender divide in tribals. Male and females are uh, both are equal to each other in terms of wealth, power, and prestige. And second, sir, tribals are nature lovingly. That's I mean there is a phenomena, sir, in anthropology, nature manuscript spirit complex proposed by LP Vidyarthi. In nature manuscript spirit complex, tribals are living with the nature in harmony. Hmm. And it should be learned by us in order to, yes, Very nice. thank you, sir. Now, again, uh, from your graduation. Uh, <laughs> Question from graduation: You dairy, dairy engineering. Yes. Okay. Now tell me, this dairy in dairy we have a very strong cooperative institutional setup in most of the states. Yes. And that is why we are doing so well in the in the uh, dairy sector. Yes. Sir. Gujarat, Rajasthan, and a lot of states are doing extremely well. Yes. Sir. Why we are not following this model in other allied activities of agriculture, for example, horticulture or this uh, all this uh, food industry why this cooperative setup is missing in uh, other sectors of uh, agriculture yes sir i also did internship in amul for 6 months where i observed that the hierarch hierarchical pattern of amul is quite systematic you know, where the every stakeholders has their own stakes that's why the, a kind of cooperative governance model is is in, is in Amul, that is why Amul is a successful model. But this model is uh, not so much effective in other activities like horticulture and uh, means in my opinion the corruption is there in those even though, even though there are certain cooperative but I am not aware, I am not able to recall mm -hmm. it. But corruption should be the problem that is why they are not working properly. And second the collection system should be the pro may be the problem sir. Okay. That is why they are not able to collect the raw material in order to produce them systematically. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, Shubham, uh, you have spent a lot of years in Madhya Pradesh and probably you, are, you continue to stay in Gujarat. Yes, sir. So, tell me, uh, you have seen, you know, the overall economy of both the states. 
tell me uh, how uh, the women of Madhya Pradesh and women of Gujarat tell the difference in terms of economic empowerment of women in these two states. Just yes. do a comparative analysis. Yes, sir. I resided in Gujarat for four years where I observed that the women of Gujarat, they are, they are, they are financially independent and they have their own startup capability. That's why more and more women are there which has their own startups in Gujarat. But in Madhya Pradesh, sir, the poverty rate of women is uh, so much huge. That's why they have to financial dependent over their male counterparts. That's why they are not financially dependent and uh, they are not capable to start their own startups. And in terms of cultural aspects, sir, the, there is less influence of patriarchy over Gujarat, mean Gujarati women and uh, there is more influence of patriarchy in MP women, sir. Okay, good. Thank you, sir. Uh, tell me, uh, India has taken a stand on Ukraine-Russia war. Yes, sir. Now, tell me, make a cost-benefit analysis of this stand. Yes, sir. Have you understood my question? Yes, sir. Sir, India, India adopts the policy of strategic autonomy in Ukraine-Russia crisis. They are which means India is trying to balance their interest on both the side because India has quite diverse relation with the Ukraine allies like USA and European Union at the same time India should not leave the Russia behind because Russia is the all weather partner for India so in the India's policy to balance its relation with both the nations is quite admirable and uh, I mean I am supporting the decision of India sir but my question, Shubham, was different. I think you have gone some other way. Sorry, sir. In taking this stand, how is India benefited? Two points. I'm sorry, sir. And in taking this stand, what would be or what could be the cost to India by taking this stand? Two points. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Have you understood now? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Recently, sir, US, US NY came to India and warned that if uh, India will will if India will continue continue with the Russia to supply its crude oil, then there may be some sanctions over India, and Russia may suffered with Katsa sanction, where the where the India will not meet the requirement of S four hundred from the Russia. It could be one negative aspect where, when India is aligned with the Russia, and when India is aligned with the Ukraine allies then Russia may ally with the China and Pakistan and it will create uh, border tensions from the China side or it will enhance the border tension from Pakistan side, sir. Okay, my last question. There have been some reforms in corporate governance. Yes, sir. Hmm? Can you list out some of the reforms which have been taken in the last, uh, say, few years and maybe after Company Act uh, 2013? has come. Yes, sir. Recently, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs launched MCA 21 database where all, all the corporates, when they want to start their own business, they may self-registered in the portal itself and it will ensure that ease of doing business is prevail in our country. This is, this is the one reform. And I'm sorry, sir, I'm not... Does it matter? So, thank you. Very well. Shubham, I would like to understand from you. Have you heard of the name the Pilt Down Man? Have you heard of in your anthropological studies the Pilt Down Man? I'm sorry, sir. Sir Woodward Smith. Yeah, Smith was a diffusionist, sir. If I am not wrong. Oh uh, no, no, then we move sorry, to the next sir. topic. Then uh, coming down to the illegal Bangladeshi migrants, you have. Heard discussed about economics and other things. Yes, sir. Can you shed some light on illegal Bangladeshi migrants, their numbers, how they are impacting our economy and is there a way out for their deportation? Yes, sir. Means this is a very serious tension in our country that Bangladeshi illegal migrants are frequently coming inside our territory and for this India means by these issues, 
India has facing certain challenges. For example, it raises the socio-ethnic tension in northeastern states. That's why insurgent insurgency is promoting. They are burdening our scarce economic resources in our country, and there are some social issues. For example, sir, last year one Bangladeshi illegal migrant raped a woman in Bengaluru. So these kind of challenges India is facing just because of illegal Bangladeshi migrant crisis. And in order to resolve the crisis, India has adopted multiple steps. For example, NRC and the Citizenship Amendment Act was enacted last last to last year, sir. But the problem is that the Bangladeshi government does not recognize that there was there was illegal migrants from the Bangladesh was taking place, sir. So if India will deport the all the illegal migrants, there may be impact over India Bangladesh relation. Okay, the other aspect of Rohingya infiltration. Yes, I would say some say they are refugees, some say they are infiltrants. How would you address them? Are they refugees or they are also illegal migrants, the Rohingyas? I am not able to distinguish between the illegal migrants or refugees. But in my opinion, they are victim of war crime. So it means uh, when the genocide was taking place in Myanmar, they have to vacate their own native place and migrate it to the neighbor countries. So, which is the immediate neighbor country? The natural, logical, natural country would have been? India and Bangladesh. Sir. Bangladesh. Yes, sir. Okay. And now, do you think that the Rohingya refugees are creating a problem for the law enforcement machinery in the country? Yes, sir. In what way? There are multiple intelligence reports that the insurgency in northeastern or various Rohingya factions are commingling or cooperated with the Naga faction, for example, NSCN IN and NSCM, NSCN K. So, means they are co they are cooperated to each other and promoting insurgency in northeastern states, sir. Is there also a talk that the Pakistan ISI is also grooming them? Yes, sir. And training them. What are the specific reports in respect of ISI and Rohingya collaboration? I am not aware about that, sir, exact report. But uh, there are some reports. I am not able to recall the exact. Never mind. Yes, For that, sir. you have to, I mean, go at a different level. I would now my last question to you would be: What do you understand by police reforms? And have we gone ahead with police reforms, or we are still there where we were 25 years ago? Yes, sir. There are various issues in the policing system. For example, burdening of policing is there. And the rising cases of custodial deaths are also quite prominent in our country. So there should be some police reforms. For example, sir, India means central government should implement all the recommendations of Supreme Court, where where Supreme Court uh, verdicted in Prakash Singh case. Yes, sir. Then uh, there should be some kind of fixed tenure for the DIG in order to ensure that. Police and political nexus should not be should not be the case in our country, and sir, law and order law and order system and investigation system should be a separate entity because when both are mixed to it mixed, mixed to each other, they are burdening the policing system. And sir, in in I am answering to your third question, sir. India is in its path for the policing reform because there are various online portals are there in in various states. For example, in Delhi. Where we can register the policing police related police related issues or grievances through online mode itself, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. That will be all from me. Thank you for the moment. Go out, then we we'll call you back. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.